Hello, this is Chaplain Stevens, and uh, coming to you from the New Jersey Institute of Theological Studies. And I want to share a short message slash lesson with you about the topic of witchcraft. I asked somebody uh, just yesterday asked me the question, "What exactly is witchcraft?" And they they were just curious as, "What is the definition of witchcraft?" And so I spent a few minutes with them, and I and, and I, I try to always give the most biblical answers I can because that's really the only answer that really matters. So I'm going to share with you the scriptures that I share with this individual. 1 Samuel 15 and 23, this is the King James Version, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And I'm also going to read Exodus 22:18. It says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And let me read 1 Samuel 15 and 23. For rebellion is as the sin of divination and insubordination as the iniquity as is iniquity and idolatry. And if I had to sum up those verses, uh, you know, uh, especially if we're coming from a Christian standpoint, uh, more so than uh, uh, Old Testament standpoint, but they both really have the same meaning. Uh, somebody that practices witchcraft is somebody that wants to be a spiritual mover and shaker without submitting to God. A witch is somebody that wants to tap into the power of God without tapping into the will of God. And you know, the most most place most of the places you see witchcraft practice, unfortunately, is in churches. Now we know we have people called Wiccans that identify themselves as witches. But that's not really the kind of witchcraft that uh uh, the Bible's talking about here. We know that they're obviously in rebellion to the Word of God and to, to, to Jesus Christ and the Word of God. But we're really talking about people that wear clergy collars like this, hold Bibles in their hands, uh, run around the altar and speak in tongues and, and claim to have power from God. And those are the witches that we need to be afraid of. Because whenever a person says that they're being moved by God, being led by God, and what they're telling you is from God, and it really isn't, that person's a witch. And the best example I can give you in our modern era of a witch was Jim Jones. Jim Jones started off seemingly as a, a normal Christian preacher. He did a lot of good things. In fact, he was even commended by the president for some of his charitable deeds in Gary, Indiana. But Jim Jones had a secret. Uh, one of his secrets was he was a pedophile. And he also was a, a, a fornicator and adulterer, and he was sleeping with a lot of the people in his church. But the biggest problem with Jim Jones, besides that, those are problems enough, uh, was the fact that he used control, mind control, and uh, exercised a lot of control over people. There was, there was one point in Jim Jones' ministry before they went to Guyana to drink the poison flavor aid. Uh, he held up a Bible in the air in church on Sunday morning, and told the people in the congregation, you don't need this anymore, listen to me. That is witchcraft. Anytime you have a leader that refuses to obey the word of God, don't follow him. If you have a leader that manipulates the word of God, don't follow him. If you have a leader that uh, will uh, refuse to be questioned about what he's teaching, and is not accountable for what he's teaching, don't follow him. A real man of God wants to, wants to teach and preach the truth. And one of the reasons why the Apostle Paul uh, was a man of such high character when it comes to the Word of God was because in, in uh, Acts 17.11 there was a group of men called Bereans that heard Paul speak. And after Paul spoke, they said to him, we will, we will examine the scriptures and make sure what you said is true. Now, can you imagine telling some famous 21st century preacher or bishop or, or whoever that uh, we're going to examine what you said and make sure it was true? They would call you a heretic. Um, but Paul commended the Bereans. And he said that you guys are men of great character. He, he, he commended them. And what I want to get across to everybody is if you want to stay free from being snared by witchcraft and false teaching and false doctrine, you need to study your Bibles. You need to read the Word of God. You need to know what's in the Word of God on every topic. You need to get a topical Bible. Study every topic in the Bible according to the Scriptures. Because often people that practice witchcraft over pulpits will take the Scriptures and twist them to their own gain. You know, a good example is 
how preachers will use Malachi 3 to terrorize people into paying tithes. And uh, that is a mishandling of scriptures. Because you really have to read the whole chapter of Malachi 3 to see that that wasn't written to the people. It was written to the priests that were stealing the tithe. Two-thirds of the... The tithes were broken up into, into three parts. One third went to the priests and the Levites. One third went to the widows and the homeless strangers. And uh, one third went to those that were people that or or, or, or the un, um, the fathers, the fathers. So the widows, the fathers, and the homeless strangers. The strangers meant those that weren't even Jews that were outside of Israel. You know, one of the things that God always did in the Old Testament was if you had a farm, He would tell the farmers, "You have excess crops, put them by the side of the road for the poor." Okay, so anytime somebody uses the scriptures to try and force you into giving, they're practicing witchcraft. You know, one of the things that Paul said, even when Paul uh, solicited the churches for funds, he said, do it as you're led, or, or as God lays it on your heart. God wants us to be spirit-led in everything we do, to include our giving. I, I, I share this with people all the time. You know, I'm very cautious about you know, cro crooks in the pulpit. But I'll never forget one time when I was separating from the military. I had $2,000 in mo uh, money that I got from selling my leave back. And, you know, I was going to give a, a donation to the church. You know, I was thinking about maybe giving a, a two or $300, whatever. But I was sitting in church one Sunday morning. And the Lord laid on my heart to give a thousand dollars. Now, one of the reasons why I know it was the Lord because there was no human telling me to do that. It was something that God placed on my heart, and I did it. And what was funny was the deacon came back to me with the check and said, "Are you sure?" And I said, "Yeah, get out of here before I change my mind." When God wants us to be a blessing and to do something, He'll let you know. He'll He'll let you know because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. You don't have to have somebody tell you, "I see a BMW in your future." You know, if you just give me fifty dollars, that's witchcraft. So you know, be careful, saints of God. The Bible says. In the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, where does a doctrine come from? A teaching. And people will use the Bible to support their false teachings. Even, even the devil tried to use the Bible when he was tempting Christ. The devil twisted the scriptures when he tempted Eve. And whatever you do, the enemy will try and twist the Bible to get you to do what's wrong. And, that, and he, he can only do that from a pulpit. So, you know, you have to be careful. Witchcraft is a real thing. Well, that's the end. That's my signal. Let me know it's the end of this broadcast. So, take care of yourselves. God bless you. Have a great day.